What's going on guys? I am super excited to be bringing you a new franchise mode series. I feel like this one's a long time coming. We're going to try and rebuild the Buffalo Sabres post Jack Eichel era. This one should be a lot of fun. You guys can see there my GM names broke tables. I feel like that's fitting for Buffalo. So obviously got to get to the Buffalo Sabres here. Top players, Brad Staline, very good young defenseman. Alex Tuck, who of course they got back in the Jack Eichel trade. I didn't realize they're top rated forward. Victor Olofsson's pretty good. He's like mid-20s, I think. So I'm not sure how much will be a part of the rebuild. Look at the Sabres team here. 84 overall makes them the lowest rated team in the Atlantic. They're actually a couple below the Senators. They're also the lowest rated team in the East. So, um, you know, definitely a lot to rebuild here. Anyone lower rated than us in the NHL? Um, I guess Arizona. Arizona was pretty terrible. Um, other than them, though, we are the lowest. So, you're not going to be making the playoffs, you know, the first two or three years, I think. We'd love to get Connor Bedard. I can't remember the last time I've actually drafted him. I don't know if I even have drafted him in NHL 22. I know I did for sure in NHL 21, though. Now, looking at the settings here, guys, I feel like everyone liked the settings in the last series, except for Sim Engine scoring. I saw a lot of comments saying they want it back on high. So I'll do that there with the shot frequency also set to high. Now, the draft class and prospect quality, I'm going to have both set to low. As we were drafting insane, like the last five years, I think, of the fantasy draft franchise with it at low. So I feel like you're already getting good enough prospects with it at low, let alone if you put it to medium. And of course, guys, we're gonna have injuries turned off for this just because I find the pop-up super annoying. I think everything else will be pretty standard, 10 season franchise mode, of course. And as always, we're gonna have the trade up piece set to hard just because more of a challenge. And I almost forgot, guys, a real quick here, I'm gonna show you all the creative players are gonna be in this series. Obviously, there was like a bug in the fantasy draft series where they weren't included, which sucks. So Adam Fantilli, all these guys are gonna be back in it. I've probably adjusted some of the ratings a bit since the last time you saw them. Uh, if you did watch, you know, my updated custom roster video, you'll be pretty up to date. I did add Drew Hellison though, because I think the Josh Manson trade without being able to move picks. Uh, Anaheim essentially got nothing for him, so I wanted to throw him in for that reason. Devin Levi's on our team. He's on the Erie Otters to make sure that we don't lose him, as I think they have too many goalie contracts. Portillo there, of course, on Michigan, but he's on our team too. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited for a lot of these guys. I think the number one guy I'm actually excited for, because he wasn't included in our last franchise due to the bug, is coming up here, Michael Misa. I'm curious to see what will be out of the draft. 65 overall there at 14, high elite. I think he's going to be like the number one pick in 2005, so if we're still sucking, maybe we'll get him. And of course here guys, we got Owen Power, 77, medium elite, going to be a big part of that D with Dalene. And so we're back in the franchise mode guys, and before I show you the lines, I first want to show you the assets we have to work with, because I'm probably going to make a trade here. You got Dalene's the highest valued player, which makes sense. Cousins power right behind him, Jack Quinn of course, you know, big part of the fancy franchise team for at least a few seasons, Alex Tuck, Isaac Rose is a good prospect. Same with Krebs, Tate Thompson coming off a breakout year. We'll see how he does for us. Ryan Johnson, good defenseman. Paterka's another good forward prospect. Same with Middlestat. Olsen's not too bad. Yoki Haraju, Bryson. Like, this team's got some players for sure. Now, as I mentioned before, guys, I think the strongest part of the Sabres team is just how many good goalie prospects they have. Devin Levi, Becca Lekin, and both medium elites. Uh, the rest of these guys kind of suck. I don't see Eric Portillo. I even put, like, Levi on the Otters to make sure we could keep him. I did the whole thing where you sign with an NHL team. I'll keep him on the junior team. So... Hopefully Portillo. Yeah, there he is. Okay, so we'll just have to sign him. I swear if anybody else gets him, I'm going to be so annoyed. I'll do like three years there at the max, and then we'll trade away one of our crap old goalies. All right, guys, going to see if the Jets will give us a seventh round pick here for Subban. Trades accepted. Okay, so we now have that spot for Portillo. Also, guys, speaking of picks, check this out. We have three first round picks this year. Our pick, of course, the Panthers pick in the Sam Reinhardt trade, the Golden Knights pick in the Eichel trade. And speaking of that, guys, there's actually something I want to do just for fun, a little bit of a challenge. I want to see if we can win a Stanley Cup before Jack Eichel in this franchise simulation. If we don't win before him, then I guess we lose. It's not a big deal, but I think that'd be really fun if, say, we can like win in year five and Eichel and the Golden Knights still haven't won one, or maybe they've even traded him and he's still cupless. And so in the comments section, guys, let me know who thinks you win the Stanley Cup first, us or Jack Eichel. And next year, guys, to make sure the Toronto Maple Leafs, for some reason, they want Colin Miller. I feel like they have enough defensemen, but 20 years old, they're 82 overall, penning for agent. Uh, if we can trade him in a sixth, the Rodion Amirov, who's a solid prospect in my eyes, usually does pretty well in the sim. I think this is a great trade for us. Trades rejected. I would bump up the six to a fourth, maybe a third. I don't know, though. Yeah, okay, there we go. So trade goes through. Probably can uh, add the lines now. So just sent through the preseason. Our record's 2-3-1. and one. Tage Thompson there, 5.6 games. Not bad at all. So you guys are lines for this season. Obviously, don't expect to be good. And hopefully, if we're not good, we're really bad to get a higher pick. First line there, though. Olsen, Cousins, Tuck isn't too bad. Again, a plus two. Second line also gets a plus two. You got Skinner, Thompson, Middlestat. Skinner, of course, got that big contract, but in here overall, he's still a decent offensive player. And honestly, we kind of need it to even hit the cap floor right now. 
Asplin there, Gurgen Sin hit Estroza plus one on the third, Ocposo, Ekin, Kajula on the fourth, also get a plus one. So the chemistry looks decent. Defensively here, Dalene, Pishik, Yogi Haraju, Bryson all get a plus two. Even Wallen and then Butcher there get a plus one. Goalie wise, we got Craig Anderson starting, Tukarski backing him up. In terms of the special teams, four man there's whatever. Uh, power play one does get a plus one. Look at the PK here, the first unit gets a plus two, the three man there's a zero and a minus one. So like it's not too bad. Honestly, if it was really good, that might be kind of bad for us. AHL wise here, we got plus one in the top six. Bjork, Krebs, and Quinn should be a really solid first line. Then we got a Miro here playing with McKinnis and Paterka. So I'm hoping Paterka and Mirov can play well and kind of grow in rating there. Uh, Rooster Lions not too bad. Hayden there could be somebody. Defensively, Power there is our number one. I feel like he probably will grow more in the AHL because his role is a minor top two defenseman. Samuelson's not too bad. 2175, medium top six. So already being a 75 for his age is really solid. Lekin, of course, starting. Levi backing him up. And then Portillo did sign with us. So he's our third string. Again, a lot of good, you know, young goalies there. Probably just going to keep whoever grows the most and then trade the other guys. I'll show you guys our ratings here as well to start the year. We know we're, what, 84 overall uh, before we trade away Colin Miller. So we now have 86 offense, 84 defense, 80 goaltending, which obviously isn't great, but I don't think it's really that terrible either. And one thing I want to show you guys too, of course, at the sim, in terms of our coaching staff here, uh, head coach, A- minus overall, actually looks really good. Um, he's got A everything except for power plays and B. Teaching and coach influence are the two most important stats. He's got A's for both of those. So I'll keep him for now and see how he does. I also, I always get asked about scouting, what I do. I just try to hit every region with an A+. I only do amateur because I don't really care about pro scouting. I've actually got to hire a few more guys. This guy's supposed to be in a different region. I just accidentally put him somewhere. Yeah, he's supposed to be SHL. But that's how I do it. I find it's the best way to go about it. So um, hopefully scouts do well here. We get some nice top picks. And like I said, if we're not making the playoffs, I want to finish last. And so it's December now, guys. We have a record of 15, 16, and 5. So really not that bad. And what's kind of crazy, we actually came out of the gate swinging. We were a really good team to start out the year. I think we were 7-1-1 and one, and one in our first nine games, and then it kind of just all fell apart from there. We're now sixth in the division there, but Lightning surprisingly doing worse than us. Canadians does make sense. Uh, Jeff Skinner's averaging almost a point per game, 35-36, but again, Sim Engine scoring such a high. Krebs there over a point per game in the AHL, AHL team, third in their division. So, you know, pretty happy so far, I'd say, with how the teams are doing. The NHL team, though, again, like, if we're not going to be good, let's be really bad. And so the trade deadline, guys, the record of 22-31-7. We're last in the division. Are we last in the NHL? The Kings are doing worse than us. The Flyers are doing worse than us. Okay. The Coyotes are actually doing a little bit better. AHL team there, though, look, they look pretty good. Second in their division. We'll see. Is Peyton Krebs still leading score? He is there, 71-69. NHL-wise, Cousins lean score, almost a point per game there with 56 and 60. So definitely going to be sellers here at the deadline. We haven't been sellers in quite a bit because that, you know, fancy franchise team was so good for so long. So we'll see what we can get. Obviously, the top players on the block we're not going for. We're going to try and, you know, trade some guys away. You got Carlson there, Klingberg, Perron, Brent Burns, Varlamov, Palat, Suter, Truba. Cam Talbot, Huso. I feel like the goalies make sense. Minnesota's going with Flurry. St. Louis going with Bennington. So we'll see what we can get for some of our older players. We really don't have anyone left other than Skinner and Ocposo. And they have such big contracts. Like, they're going to be so hard to trade. I feel like almost impossible. And look at this, guys. I just realized Dylan Cousins has gone up five overall, now in 88. Season isn't even over yet. That's crazy. Also, Deline there is up one to an 87. So, you know, good to see kind of our top players growing. I actually do wonder Owen Power. He's also gone up by one, now 78. And so right here, guys, we're trying to trade a couple of veterans who are pretty average. Mark Pishik, 79 overall. He does have the shot block X-Factor. Gergensen, 79 as well, uh, 20 years old. Two more years at 2.2. Avalanche here want both these guys. They got Martin Kell in the block. And I think Arkas actually have more value. He's got 50 points right now, 69 games in the AHL. He's a solid prospect. Former first-round pick, 2018. Let's see what the apps say to this. Trades rejected. Asset no longer on the team. Well, that's annoying. I guess we have to settle for Olison, who I think is slightly worse, but whatever. And they, ooh, the trade rejected. I thought that would have went through. Uh, could try, I don't know, a fifth round pick to sweeten it up. There we go. And check this out, guys. Rodion Mirov went up like two or three overall, now 68. Whereas Johnny Smaturka went up 13 overall. Now it's 78 the deadline. Like, that's insane. Next, you guys are trying to trade Hinnis Shows of the Capitals for Alexiev. He's 22 years old, 75 overall, low top four, which is like, okay. 39 points right now in the AHL. It looks to be on their top pair. Henestroza, one year left. I'm not going to be bringing him back. 
Alexiev could become an NHL defenseman for us, so I think it's worth trading for. Trades rejected. It's got to be close, though. Maybe we throw in, like, a seventh-round pick. We'll do Winnipeg's because they should be higher than us. And there we go. Okay, so I think that's a nice trade, too. And probably the last trade I'm going to make here, guys. want to send Kajula to the Wild for a sixth-round pick. Just another small deal to give us some assets. They say yes to that. Okay, so hopefully, you know, we can use all these prospects, these picks to help build this team into a contender. And look at this, guy. So I already mentioned that we had three first-round picks this year, but I didn't know we had three seconds next year, like... We're set up pretty well here. And so the trade deadline is now complete, guys. I'm actually curious to see some of the trades that went down. As a lot of the big-name players on the block got moved. Connor McMichael there, the St. Louis Blues, for two-thirds. Along with McGurkin, hopefully I said his name right. That doesn't seem like a good trade for Washington at all. I would have definitely went after McMichael if I knew that was all it cost. And they also got another player with him. What the heck? That's a weird one. Um, I guess we missed it on that one because could have gotten Connor McMichael. Although, he was a bust in our last franchise. Uh, so a couple of our trades there. David Perron and James Neal go to the Ducks. Interesting. Blues get Tracy, Hellison. So it's a good thing I you know gave him to them so they can make some moves. They're actually competing, I guess. They're adding Perron. Um, another trade of ours. Phil Kessel, the Rangers. Um, Kout there went to the Vegas Golden Knights for a third. Cormier and a fifth. Ferraro to the Canucks. Interesting. Nick Light of the Penguins. Dezingle, the Rangers. True to the Sharks. They're taking on a lot of salary there. Uh, Klingberg to the Ducks, okay. Ryan Suter to the Leafs with the Mesnikov. First round pick and Jacob Perot going to Dallas in exchange for Jamie. Oh my gosh, in exchange for John Klingberg, Jamie Benn, Luke Glendening. What a blockbuster there between Anaheim and Dallas. Again, I can't believe Anaheim was doing well enough. They can add all these guys. Klingberg, Ben, Perron, Glendening, Neal. Like, that's nuts. And Dallas got a first-round pick there from the Leafs for Suter and Nemestikov. So they're loading up for the future. And as you see below that, the Sharks got a first and second-round pick for Carlson. And then with that cast base, they got Jacob Truba for Dezangle, a third, and two others. I mean, Truba's not terrible. So same money, but they got a first-round pick. I've seen worse trades on the computer, I'll say. John Beecher there to the Blue Jackets. All right, so yeah, some crazy moves. Scott Mayfield to the Kings. Very, very active trade deadline, which of course you'd love to see. But this one here had to be the biggest. Klingberg and Ben to Anaheim with a first and Perot to Dallas. And talk to the trade deadline, guys. Here's an update look at the roster. The top six forwards are still the same. I feel like they've been solid, plus two on both. Bottom six is much different. So we got Oscar Olison actually in the NHL just because the way it worked with the cap, we were like so far below it, I couldn't get him down. To play with Asplund and Bjork there. Okposo, Eakin, reached the line on the fourth line. Defensively, Dalene and Bryson, the top pair. Yoki Harju, Butcher, surprisingly get plus three on the second. I didn't even realize that. Davidson, Wallen, and also get a plus two. So I don't think they're going to be too good, but you know, hopefully it'll help their growth. Now, AHL wise, it kind of sucks if you lost some players in the NHL. Like Olison could be on the AHL team. Bjork was down there. Roost the line in, but they should still be decent. So Paterka, Krebs, Quinn on the first line. Amirov and McKinnis playing with this Sidurkis guy. 56 overall. Medium top nine, though. I figured, what the heck? Gives him a plus two. We do have, you know, some 70s there with Mersch and Hayden on the third line. Even the fourth line's not terrible. Still have Powers, our number one defenseman. Alexi is there now, too. So, I think, you know, we have a chance with Pekulak and good goalie. Just uh, kind of one of the things that you have to deal with. Although, I think once the playoffs start, we actually can send some guys back down to the AHL. So, I just got to make sure to remember that. And so, something this season here, guys, we have a record of 34, 40, and 8. We finished second last in the division. The Canadians there, three points below us. So, I mean, we're going to have a good draft spot no matter what. I am curious to see. So Vegas Golden Knights there. Um, they're in the playoffs, unfortunately. Florida Panthers also in the playoffs. I think they actually won the President's Trophy. But uh, two late first-round picks. We'll take that. Dylan Cousins, almost point per game there, 79. HL-wise, Krebs just over point per game. Love to see that. And they actually already started the playoffs. Did they not make it, though? I don't see our team. Oh, they're in the second round already. Did we miss the playoffs or did we not make it? Let's, we did not make the playoffs, wow. So yeah, losing all those guys at NHL definitely hurt us. But we'll take a look here and see how everyone else did. Alex Tuck, 72. Olsen, 71. Solid performance. Thompson, 67. Skinner, 64. He could get up to an 84. Delaney, almost 50. 87 overall already. That's awesome. Middlestat, 41. That's 79. I figured he's still younger. Signed to a you know pretty long-term deal there. Let's get him growing. Asplund did okay. Um, I think overall pretty happy with everybody here. Goaltending wise, Craig Anderson, he was just kind of there, so not a big deal if his numbers weren't great. HL, Krebs, Power at 79, love that. Hayden there, Quinn 55, 31 goals, Amira 46, Turka 45, alright. 
Goalie wise, with Pekka Lekin in point 903, 3.08. Could have been better, like Levi's stats, they were actually really nice. Now looking at the stats for the entire league, Mitch Marner, 111 points, led the league in points. Obi, though, one behind him. You got McDavid at the bottom there with Matthews, McKinnon, Crosby, so arguably the four best fours in each other right there. Goal-wise, Ovechkin, 62. Defensive scoring here, Roman Yossi, 75. Tied with Adam Fox. Fox, though, is a plus 20. I'm surprised McCarr's not up here. He must have had a weird year. Goalie-wise, Borowski, most wins. Best save percentage was Saros there. Actually, Lankin and Saros tied. Best goals against the goes to Bobrovsky, so he might win the Vesna. Calder Trophy, gonna go to Trevor Zegers. 88 points, yeah, he's definitely winning it. And so looking at the entire league now, guys, like I mentioned, Ford there wins the President's Trophy. You got 17 to 100 plus. I'm actually not sure, like, are we third last, fourth last? What's the deal? So we were three, four, five, sixth last, wow. San Jose, New Jersey were just one win worse than us, which kind of sucks, you know, draft lottery-wise. Montreal Kings, Flyers 67. I can't believe they were that bad. And the playoffs are now complete, guys. Stanley Cup champions there, the Florida Panthers. So one of our three first-round picks is going to be 32nd overall. What are you going to do? Arizona jumps up from 9-1. to one. That could have been us. We dropped from 6-7. to seven. Could have dropped two spots. So, I mean, I guess, you know, not the worst-case scenario, but I was really hoping for a higher pick. Wow, and I just realized you got Arizona picking 1 and 5, as EA gives Arizona the Montreal pick here, which is so stupid. I think they decided at the beginning of the year it was going to be Montreal or Carolina, they went with Montreal, but Carolina was the way better team. They should have done the Carolina pick. But like I said in previous videos, no way for me to change that. Looking at retired players here, Patty Marlowe retired as a free agent. If we were a competing team, I would have signed him just, you know, to be a healthy scratch on a cup run. Chara there, Seabrook. I'm actually surprised how many guys are retiring, because usually in the first year, no one retires, so... Um, this is a bit of a shock, to be honest. Goalie-wise, we're no goalies. So, we got, what, pick seven? I think, you know, who could be there? There's some solid players, especially with all the custom players added. Brad Lambert could still be there. Savoy, um, depending, you know, kind of how it goes down. As I was editing, guys, I realized I totally forgot to record the awards. Obviously, Florida there won the Stanley Cup and the President's Trophy. Great year for them. They actually beat Colorado in the Stanley Cup Finals. So the Stanley Cup Final, a lot of people predicted in real life this year was the one that actually happened in-game. Individual awards here, obviously, Marner at Ross also got the heart. Fox there, back-to-back, -back, James Norris. Marner also got Lady Bing. Zegers Calder, Hubert Ocon Smythe. Bobrovsky there did get the Vesna along with the William Jennings Trophy. Alexiak, Bill Masterton. Capitals coach, Jack Adams. Interesting, they're already a pretty good team. O'Reilly there got the Selkie. Marner, Ted Lindsay. Ovechkin, Marisha Shard. Marner cleaned up. AHL-wise, you look at comments there, Calder Cup. And we're not going to have any team awards since we missed the playoffs. Individual here, Drew Shore here had the most points. Okay, he also got MVP. Matty Beniers, most goals. Nolan Foote, though, best rookie. I'm surprised Beniers didn't win that with most goals. Uh, Ledoux there, best D-man. Schneider, best goalie, okay. Boquist, MVP of the playoffs. Ken Johnson, sportsmanship. Uh, Clayson there, community involvement. Schneider there, lowest goals against. Now, speaking of AHL, guys, I actually realized, too, not only did I forget to record the awards, I don't know what I was thinking, I also want to show you guys where the AHL team finished in the standings since, you know, the playoffs started early for us. As I thought our AHL team did pretty solid last year, so yeah, we still missed the playoffs. Look at this, 44-31-7 record, and we missed the playoffs. Like, that's kind of crazy. And so at the draft here, guys, Shea Red, of course, is going number one. You then have three made-up guys at 2, 3, and 4. That's annoying. Logan Cooley at 5. Lambert, 6. Kamel, 7. Wow, Savoy, 8. So, yeah. Kind of have our pick. We also go Slavkovsky, Nemec there if we want defenseman, Yurov, Jerichek, Lekarmaki, Mario Shachanko, Nazar, Geeky, all those guys are medium elites. Wow. So yeah, we really kind of just can take whoever we want here. I'm good with whoever. So yeah, we'll send to pick seven. Lambert just went. Cooley went at five. Uh, made up guy, made up guy, made up guy. Luckily, they're all 75 as opposed to being low 80s. I like that a lot better. Right there, first overall pick to Arizona. We can take Kamel or we could take Savoy. I know we just had Kamel on the fancy franchise team. We traded Owen Power for him, actually. So I'm kind of leaning towards Savoy, especially since, you know, Jack Quinn's already the sniper that Kamel is. I think maybe it makes more sense to go Savoy, get that playmaker. Let's take him. And as you can see there, 73 medium lead, so same rating and potential as Lambert. And so now our next pick here is number 29. I'm wondering, should we trade up potentially? Like, who could we get there? So Marco Casper wouldn't be a bad pick. Liam Ogren, I believe, is medium top six. Uh, Casey there as well. Nathan Gosher, I think, is medium top six too. Now, Matthew Ward here, we saw in my last franchise. He actually ended up being a great player for the Red Wings. So could take him. 
Uh, Jansen here, guaranteed medium top four potential, but three year NHL ATA. So right now, guys, I'm actually trying to trade back up. The Boston Bruins have their 12th overall pick on the block. I want their third round pick with that, which is Tampa's pick, for 32nd and 38. So, like, this is a great move up if they say yes. Trade rejected. Don't give us the third. I'll give them 32nd, 38 for 12th all day. Trade rejected. Okay, the value was on our side, but they didn't want to do it. Um, let's do... We have three seconds next year. Is it? It's probably worth it, right, to get a medium elite player because we're guaranteed one at 12? They say yes. Okay, so we're bringing in another medium elite prospect. Jerichek just went there. Yurov, Kamel, Slavkovsky. Ooh, we could get Nemec here. Gives us a very solid defenseman for the future. Lekermak is a good sniper. Miroshchenko also a sniper. Frank Nazar is a solid two-way guy. Um, I'm thinking like rating-wise, it's got to be Nazar and Nemec, honestly. We have power, we have Dalene. Do we need Nemec too is the question. We do have a lot of forwards though. And obviously next year it's Bedard and Michkov, although Theo Lindstein's there too. You know what guys, I think we gotta go Nemec because we already got our 1-2 punch for the next 10 years at center with Cousins and Savoy. And then on the wings we'll have Tuck, Thompson, Skinner, Olofsson, like we're kind of set for the top six. And that doesn't even factor in all the prospects like Quinn, Paterko, Mirov. So yeah, let's go Simon Nemec, 72 medium elite. If he grows into like, you know, an 86 plus, I'm happy with that. Uh, I get to pick 29 here. Marco Casper just went. That's the guy I wanted, but that's okay. Could go Casey there. But like I was saying, I kind of want to like, I don't know, go for a bit of a reach here. Matthew Ward, we saw went off for the Red Wings. Is it worth it? Will he do it again? I've only seen it happen once. You can also take a safer pick, say like Casey is a defenseman. Ogren I've seen get decent. Same with Gosher. Let's just for fun, let's go Matthew Ward. Like we saw him go off last time. Why can't he go off for us? 67 medium top six. He's actually higher rated than Casper there. You guys can see Pickering just went. Nelson, Korchinski, McGrody there. Mintikov, Dume, Nylander, Solomonson, Matichuk. Antilla there, 77 medium lead at 18. Some made up kind of the Blue Jackets, wow. Uh, Zilkin, Nazar at 16 actually, wow, so what a pick for the Oilers. Miroshchenko, Geeky, oh wow, I thought Miroshchenko was high top 6, but he's still medium lead. Uh, we definitely made the best pick, you can see now there's 72, the rest of the guys are lower rated. So, our next pick's now not until pick 70. Um, we can drop back 14 spots, get a 5th. I feel like that's okay. I actually haven't even like looked at the draft class to get an idea of steals because I was just so worried about the first round. Now at this spot, guys, I feel like it makes sense to take this Harrington goalie. Could be a high starter. Imagine he's being elite. I think he's just probably best value end of the third round. And oh my god, 47 overall high elite goalie end of the third round. Our goalie prospects are insane. And now right here, guys, I'm trying to make sure the Philadelphia Flyers to get their fourth round pick. I'm offering up Josh Bloom here, 1961, medium top nine. Now, we're technically probably going to lose this trade. They say yes, because I already know who I'm going to take. And it's a bit of a homer pick for me, but um, he should still be there. He's had a great season so far with the Spitfires. Uh, didn't get drafted last year. Should get drafted this year. Matthew Maggio here. Love watching him play. Such a good skater. Has a good shot on him. I've actually boosted his potential to low top nine, which obviously isn't as good as the guy we just had. But he is 63 overall. Just kind of a favorite player of mine. I actually gave him lead edges too, because... Like I said, just such a good skater. His edgework as well is insane. So if he can actually become even like a high-end AHL player, I'll be happy. And our next pick here, guys, is 166. So um, we're just kind of looking for best available. Seven there, low elite. Do we have any of the medium elites still? There's a couple. Um, Ellington about to go. Come on. Right defenseman. Medium top six. Not the end of the world. Um, 185. We want to drop back 10 spots. We get another seventh round pick. Honestly... That lane in the draft, you might as well. I don't want Strawman there. Dropping back five spots to get signing rights to Strawman. Yeah, I'm definitely passing on that one. So, is the other medium league guy still there? He is. Jenner, come on. Uh, medium bomb six. All right, well, you guys know. Miss 100% of the shots you don't take. We're taking another shot here. This guy here is supposed to be medium top nine, like three of four. And medium bottom six. They played us. I think this is our last pick now. I'm just going to swing for the fences. Take this Kane Armstrong goalie. I doubt he's medium elite, but imagine if he is. Fringe starter. Honestly, this late in the seventh, that's not even a bad pick. And so right there, you guys can see all the players we picked in this draft. I think we did quite well, especially the high league goalie in Harrington at 84. Like, what a steal. And so we're at the re-sign phase, guys, and check this out. Rasmus Dallin's now 90 overall. 
he grew a ton. And I mean, he could still grow more in the summer. Dylan Cousins is an 89. Can we do an extension yet? Okay, no. Beginning of next year, we'll do that. Alex Tuck's under contract. Olofsson I'd like to keep. So, qualify. Six million for the next five years is a bit expensive, but I forgot to tell you guys, we have 40 million in cap space. Like, we have nothing but money. Honestly, I think I'd rather do a bridge deal, see how he does the next couple seasons. Let's do five and a half for the next two years. And then after that, like all these guys are signed. Uh, Bryson there could probably get long-term relatively cheap. Yeah, 1.9 for three. We could do an eight-year deal. If he gets to like an 82, 2.2 million, potentially be a steal. Will Butcher here is a 79, done growing. Just gonna let him go. Roost the Lion, if he grows, could be like a fourth liner for us next year. 900k, I don't mind that at all. Let's do three years, 950k. And now Matthew Savoy is definitely going to be going back to juniors, guys. Only a 73, where Nemich could actually play on our AHL team this year, so we'll do that. Next year, guys, I'm looking at goalies. Craig Anderson there, 80 overall, but he's 41 years old. Doesn't want an extension. That's fine. Ukebeck Lekkinen definitely got to resign. Eight years. I know he gets good. Do we just get him for 6 million right now? Um, I wonder, like, if he does... <laughs> Is this stupid to do like 5.5 right now? Because I know he's going to get good. Although I guess we're only saving 2 million bucks. I guess too, like the money it's costing us now, we have a ton of cap space. So pay extra, we have extra, save more in the future. Let's see if he does this big deal right now. Aaron Dell, he's gone. Tukarski, he's gone. Um, Levi there, obviously he's a prospect. Portillo, I still can't believe Harrington here. 1847, he's low rated, but highly potential. Like... We have literally four future NHL goalies on our roster. Now, speaking of position, guys, looking at the defense, we got Dallin, we got Bryson. I guess Yoki Harju, power will probably be NHL defense for next year. So we need at least two more of them. Forward-wise, I think we need like three more forwards, but uh, we're going to have about $30 million to spend on like five positions. we got a ton of money. And so Jacob Bryson here, guys, accepted his offer. Olofsson wants more money. Russell Lyons said yes. Ukepek Lekkinen. Took that big term deal, so hopefully, like I said, that works for us. And you know what? We'll try keeping Olsen there on the five years, but I'm only gonna give him 5.75. And he says yes, okay. So even if we have to trade him in the future, that should be like a you know not terrible contract. And so it's another free agency period here, guys. We definitely gotta be smart with what contracts we give out because we need good young players for the future more so than veterans. Kachuk's available. Wow. Um, RFA is gonna cost us four first rounders. I'm not willing to do that and give up potentially Connor Bedard. Same with Kevin Fiala. Kadri's 31, which is like slightly too old, I think, to make something happen. Bergeron. Philip Forsberg at 27 is actually, you know, if we're competing in four years, he's only 31. He would still be a good player at that point. So he's definitely, you know, some guy we could go get. Trocek. I mean, I'd just rather Forsberg, I think. Drew's too old. Kane. Sonny Milano. Is he a UFA? RFA at 26. Same with Donato. Tyler Ennis could bring back kind of a Buffalo legend. Colin Miller wants 5.4. That's why we trade him. He actually dropped in rating too. Andrew Kopp here as well. 27 years old. Like, solid player. 5 million. Could get him. Raquel, 29. It's just like a slightly too old maybe. Now, Mikola here. 26-year-old A1 overall defenseman. One year left to grow. Medium top four potential. 3.6 million. We do just kind of need bodies on D. He might not be the worst guy to sign. Um, I'm probably just going to give him like just under. 3.5 to 3. He would get a lot of time to play on our team, which might make him, you know, sign with us. Now, looking at defensemen, there's really not a lot of options here, so I'm going to try Troy Stetcher. I liked him on the wings. That's kind of sad we trade him away. Two years, we'll do 2.5. Now, goaltenders, we actually do need a starter, because Ukepek Lekkinen's probably AHL starter, which would be hilarious, making that much money, or NHL backup. Flurry we could get, but that would mean we're going to be, like, a better team. Now, the thing is, I don't want Ukepek Lekkinen to start and get destroyed and, you know, never grow because of that. So I feel like it makes sense to bring in somebody. Lankinen, 83, 1.8. That might kind of be the play. Just kind of somebody to like help out the team not get destroyed every night. Huso, 27, 4 million. I mean, I feel like it just makes more sense to go Lankin in there for half the price, one overall less. We even give him, I don't know, just under 2 million for the two years. And I'm curious too, two-way goalies. Uh, doesn't look to be anyone too crazy. And they'd have to be so good. Uh, to kind of justify us, make them an offer. Now looking at two-way skaters here. Uh, Julian Gauthier, UFA 24-77, medium top six. I don't know. He's on the Rangers, right? I don't know what they're thinking. We'll definitely give him a contract. Even Lucas Johansson here, 24-75. Could pair him up with Alexi, two former capital defensemen. Kale Clegg as well. Sometimes he can get to an 80. Wade Allison here. I think I saw a comment. Somebody wanted me to sign him. 
If I'm wrong about who the player is, I apologize, but I feel like it was him, so I'll do that. He's actually pretty solid too, 24 years old, 78 overall, high top nine. And as I mentioned guys, I wouldn't mind signing Forsberg, obviously he's gonna make our team a lot better sooner, but you're getting a superstar, so six years, that's at least 33. I'm probably fine with that. Honestly, I'm just gonna give him what he's asking, and if he says yes, he does, if not, whatever. And then Andrew Kopp's kind of like the insurance option. We get both, I mean, whatever. Um, I'll give Cop 85. It's pretty good. I'll give Cop 5.5 there for 5. So, curious to see what happens. Really, the defense is going to be pretty bad because there wasn't a lot of options there. I think we'll probably wait too to see if there's any more steals kind of in a few weeks. So Lincoln there accepted the offer. Going to be our starter for next year. Stetcher there joining the team. Same with Clay. Gauthier, I think that's a great pickup. Uh, Mikolo there said yes. Okay, I was wondering because we gave him a little bit less than he asked. Uh, Johansson said yes. Allison went with Vegas, are you kidding me? And now this one's interesting guys, I see Carson Terensky's available, 2477, Kraken drafted him, he's a grinder with really good physical stats, everyone says how you want them on the fourth line. What if we gave him an offer, I don't know, like 1.2 million or something, where Seattle decided it wasn't worth it, even though we don't have to give up any picks, yeah no picks required, 1.3, but he can grow to like a 7980, be a really good fourth liner. Might not be a terrible sign there. Now, Forsberg said no with the Islanders. We'll have to go see how much he signed for. Cop, though, did say yes. Quick draw there, X-Pack. So, it'll probably be our second line center, I think. Move Thompson to the wing. Wow. Colorado's willing to take on Jeff Skinner's salary for a second or third round pick. I think we have to say yes here because that gives us a lot of money for, like, a $9 million player, for instance. Philip Forsberg's 87. Skinner's only 83. Um, yeah, plus we're getting two picks. Thank you to the Colorado Avalanche. I don't know where they got the money to do that. Um, but yeah, we had to say yes to that one. Kind of hurt to let Skinner go. It was the right move to make. Look at that. Forsberg signed for just over $9 million for one year. We could have Philip Forsberg with that money if they made the offer just a little bit sooner. And I might sign Nico Sturm here, guys. We like a solid bomb six forward. 88 D awareness, 85 shot block, 88 stake check. Like, that's a smart defensive player. Let's offer him 1.75, two years. If he says no, he says no. We'll have just AHL guys coming up. Now, I did see Kevin Fiala was in free agency. I'm not giving up a first-round pick for him, but I would be willing to trade for him if the Wild will, will make that move. All right, guys, so as you can see, the Minnesota Wild are strapped for cash. They're $2 million below the salary cap max because of, you know, buying out Prize Suter. Although in this game, I don't think they make the buyouts as bad as they actually are in real life. So Kevin Fiala, really good player, 87 overall, only 25 years old still, coming off a solid season there. What is that, 70 points, a few X-Factors. Would be a great player to build our team around. Asplund here is not too bad, but he's a pretty average player. Cheap contract. So they can actually afford him this season. I'm also adding Carter's second round pick in the upcoming draft and our third round pick. So this trade would basically be like Skinner for Fiala since we got a second and a third from Colorado. I'm not going to trade our second. The Philly second, they were just terrible. So I'm um, not going to move that. Again, the first round pick we could do in an offer sheet, but I'm hoping that's like Connor Bedard. See what the Minnesota Wild say to this one. Trades rejected. Okay, what if we do a second rounder 2024? I feel like Fiala's worth it. Trades accepted. Wow, okay. So yeah, Kevin Fiala now on the team. Just got to give him a contract. So for seven years, he wants 8.7. That's at least 32. Um, it doesn't really change ever, eh? Let's try. He is cheaper than Forsberg, and he's still growing. The 85% rule of 7.75 for seven. Basically like a triple seven there. I feel like that's a good number. And now Nico Sturm rejected our offer with the Kraken. Why more of a playoff contender? And he goes to the Kraken. Uh, Torinsky accepts as of now. I wonder if maybe they won't match. Uh, Kraken chose to match. Okay, so that's all right. Fiala rejects the offer, wants a bit more money. And honestly, guys, you know what I'm thinking? Let's just play hardball with Fiala, wait till the end of the summer, get him cheaper. Worst case, a team comes in and gives him a crazy offer. We have the cap space to match it, so it's basically almost no risk. And look at this guys, Patrice Bergeron for some reason is still available. 93 overall. We're almost in August. No one signed him. 93 points last year. Do we sign him and just trade him with the deadline? Unless we're like looking like a legit Stanley Cup contender because he would get so much value. I don't really want to do this but it's like I'm waiting until the end of July. Like I don't know what these computer GMs are thinking. 8.5. If he says yes, I think we probably don't make the playoffs. Our goaltending is not good enough. Defense definitely isn't good enough, but uh, we'll see. And look at that, guys. Bergeron leaves Boston for our team. I know in real life he might retire, but in this franchise, he's joined the Sabres. Right, we're now in mid-August here, guys. A couple offers I want to make. 
Kachev here is basically like potentially an AHL superstar. We'll do tiers there, 950k. Uh, especially using the top six. Like, look at those offensive stats. Those are really good. And then NHL wise, I actually saw surprisingly Arturi Lekin is still available. 81 overall. He's a good two way player. Um, two years, not much different. Let's try 1.75 for two years. Again, 87D awareness and stick check. He's quick. Could be a solid bottom six player for us. Fiala's ask is down to 5.9. I'm willing to still wait longer. Eight years down, way more money though. 7, 13. Oh my gosh. So the long-term deal is a lot more money. The short-term, though, is cheaper. Oh, that kind of sucks for us. And as, and as you can see here, Kachev accepted our offer. Also, I skipped by it on accident, but Lekkanen did too. Oh, crap. Okay, guys. So Kevin Fiala accepted his qualifying offer. I'm not even sure what it was. I guess we'll go find out. Uh, we'll have to give him a new contract at some point. He's making $5 million for one more year. Then he becomes a UFA, which kind of sucks for us. Cousins here. He wants $12.5 million already. Yeah, definitely going to wait out that one. I also realized too, guys, I had the captaincy thing pop up. I didn't even show you guys the captain to start last year, but I guess it would just been whatever the default was. So I'm trying to think whose team is this, and I feel like it's either Cousins or Dallin's. The thing is, Dallin's like so quiet and whatnot. I feel like this team probably belongs to Dylan Cousins, so I'm giving him the C. Dallin's definitely going to be wearing an A, and Power, I think, will be getting an A too. The two first overall pick defense both wearing A's, but... I feel like this is probably Cousins' team. And so it's time to start next season. I'm going to show you guys what the team is looking like. Honestly, I don't know how they're going to do. It's kind of a wild card year. So, got plus five on the first line there. Tuck, Bergeron, Cousins. Again, my thinking is we'll miss the playoffs. Trade Bergeron for some haul the deadline. Second line is pretty solid. Fiala, Kopp, and Thompson. Third line is Olofsson, Milstadt, Lekin, which honestly isn't terrible either. Bjork, Okposo, Gothia in the bottom line. We're actually pretty short at center, not, not only in the NHL, but also AHL. Luckily, Okposo's got 70 face-offs there. And I didn't realize Gothia's got crazy physical 5-star there. 92 body check, 95 strength. Defensively, we got Power, Dallin, Top, pair getting a plus 3. Yoki Harju, Bryce in the second pair. Mikola, Stetcher, bottom pair, get a minus 3. But, like, the guys we want to grow are in the top 4, getting good chems. So, it's kind of like whatever. Uh, if I do this, you can see it doesn't change anything. So... I thought this was like the best solution. Goaltending wise, we got Lankinen and Ukupek Lekinen, both 83. So hopefully true tandem. They each start about 40 games. Ukupek Lekinen's role there as a backup. So I think that's ideal for him. Now in terms of the AHL team, I love the first line. We got Paterka, Krebs, and Quinn getting a plus one. I think they're going to go off. Uh, Isaac Rosen, Picard, Amirov on the second. Kachev there playing with Rusik, Olison. Rusik's just like a guy again. Center depth is pretty non-existent in the AHL. Roost the line in there. Uh, defensively, Clegg, Alexi, plus two on the top pair. Johansson, Samuelson. The bottom pair is probably like our future NHL second pair. Ryan Johnson, Simon Nemich. So I'm hoping they have a good season. Goaltending-wise, we got Levi starting. Portillo backing him up now. So honestly, like I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. Um, again, if we can get Bedard or Michkov in the next draft, our rebuild is going to excel a lot, a lot, a lot. So we'll see, again, where this team ends up. This year, we're going to have 91 offense, 87 defense, 83 goaltending. So, uh, much higher rate than we were last year. But are we going to be a playoff team? I don't think so. Again, you never know with the sim. But that's where we're going to end this one, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.